Welcome to this service of worship brought to you by Monroe Street Church. We are glad you are here. We have resumed in-person worship outside on our lawn at 1030 each Sunday. We invite you to join us. We will continue to offer this virtual service as well. As a church, we are committed to being a welcoming community, celebrating diversity of all racial, ethnic, cultural backgrounds, sexual orientations, or gender identities. Our mission is to deepen faith, engage our neighborhood, and to become an inclusive community. I am Pastor Larry Clark, who along with Pastor Elizabeth Rand served this congregation. We hope that you will tune in or join us in person each week. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you. Good morning. Let us pray. Holy One, Holy Three, be our guide, our guardian, and our strength today. Let us be treated kindly by all whom we meet and remind us to treat kindly all whom we meet. Grant us Christ's forgiveness from anyone we harm and charge us in Christ's name to forgive anyone who does us harm. Guide our ways, guard our lives, and grant us strength to honor our Christ of peace. Holy Three, Holy One. Amen.
Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menean, a member of the court of Herod, and ruler and Saul. And while they were worshiping and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. This is the good news. Years ago, my sister gave me a tapestry that has the word peace painted on it in many different languages, including Latin, Pax, Swahili, Amani, and Filipino, Kapa Yapan. Last week, I sat in front of this peace tapestry as I participated in an online mediation skills training for church leaders that was offered by the Lombard Mennonite Peace Institute. All week, we explored the nature of conflict, reflected on our personal experiences of conflict, and learned practical spills, skills for responding to conflict, particularly in the church. One day, our teacher showed us a graph that displayed the relationship between our intensity about a conflict and our ability to communicate with one another. Not surprisingly, the higher our intensity, the more our ability to communicate with one another declines. So when we experience a high amount of intensity about, about a conflict, or when we are anxious or angry with someone about something, we are likely operating out of the primal part of our brain, that part of our brain that is responsible for our survival. We go into a fight or flight mode believing that a tiger is coming and that our lives hang in the balance. If our intensity moderates, we move into our limbic brain, that part of our brain where we can be playful and silly, as our dogs and cats are. My teacher said that when he goes into a church that is, at, that is in conflict, he assesses how intense this conflict is among the church members by telling them jokes. If the people can laugh with one another, that means they might be able to listen to one another. Now another part of our brain, the neocortex, is where we think consciously and rationally. When we operate out of this part of our brain, we are much less intense and we are able to solve our problems together conflict resolution becomes possible. Now this week, as schools and other institutions responded to high community transmission of the Delta variant by reinstating mask mandates, it, be it became clear that many of us right now are operating out of this primal part of our brain. We are anxious and angry just ready to fight with one another. We can't listen and we can't be rational. Now you might have seen on the news after a local school board in Tennessee issued a mask mandate, some people protested and even physically threatened parents who attended this meeting wearing masks. Now this scene is playing out in countless ways across our country including in churches, as we struggle with how to respond to the pandemic now. In this anxious time, God calls us and sends us to become persons of peace everywhere. Now the medita med mediation skills I learned last week were based on the teachings found in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, if your brother or sister sins against you, go address this when you are alone together. But if they won't listen to you, take with you one or two others so that every word might be established by the witnesses. 
The Lombard Institute trains and sends teams of two to help people work through their interpersonal conflicts. Mediators never go alone. They always have a partner, so they can work as a team in leading people through a process of lowering their intensity and helping them listen to one another, after which they are, after which they are ready to brainstorm ways of resolving their conflict. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus called 72 disciples to go on a peace mission to Samaria, sending them again in pairs. He knew that they would encounter suspicion, anxiety, even hostility when they went into communities that might not welcome them and their work of kingdom healing and teaching. Jesus encouraged these missional partners to support and protect one another on the journey, as each offered their own gifts and wisdom, hoping to connect with the Samaritans they encountered. There is power in being called as two, sent to be bearers of God's love and peace in a highly conflicted world. In our New Testament lesson this morning, we noticed that the Holy Spirit called and sent two, Saul and Barnabas, on a mission to share God's love and peace with Gentile communities, who, like the Samaritans, might also not welcome their work of proclaiming Jesus. When we first met Saul, he was a member of the Sanhedrin, zealously persecuting followers of Christ. After his encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus, Saul became a zealous follower of Christ. He proclaimed Jesus in the synagogues of Damascus, inflaming people so much that they tried to kill him. The disciples saved him by lowering him in a basket through an opening in a wall. Saul returned to Jerusalem, where disciples there were afraid of him. Barnabas must have been among those sent to support Saul in Damascus, for he affirmed the authority of Saul's conversion and the power of his preaching. The disciples relented and let Saul preach in Jerusalem, where he angered more people who tried to kill him. The disciples saved Saul again, and this time sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, after a church was established in Antioch, Barnabas went to visit this new community, and we learned that he was a good, faithful man who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Barnabas brought Saul to Antioch, where they spent a year with the church before the Holy Spirit called them and sent them on a new mission of proclaiming Jesus to the Gentiles. In this partnership, Barnabas was a wise, mature, gracious Christ follower who mentored and supported Saul, helping him grow into his best self, becoming less Saul-centered and more Christ-centered. And Barnabas learned by working alongside Saul, who is a deeply idealistic, powerful preacher and teacher. Over time, Barnabas helped Saul mature into a presence who didn't simply inflame others, making them angry and defensive, but who invited them into Christ's way of living and being. Together, they were called and sent to be people of peace, for they proclaimed the Christ of peace through their loving words and actions. How is God calling and sending us to be people of Christ's peace in this anxious time. There are just a few simple tools that might be helpful for us as we encounter people who are angry about having to wear masks, or who are afraid of getting a vaccine, or who are resentful because they feel forced to do something they don't want to do. One response is simply to listen not in order to respond, or argue, or convince them to adopt our point of view, but simply to hold space for them in a non-anxious way. Then, after they have finished talking, we summarize what we heard them say, again, without commentary, without judgment. 
For when we are feeling anxious, what we want the most is to be heard. If we know someone respects us enough to listen carefully to us, that might help our intensity to ease up even a bit, maybe enough so we can laugh together about something. When we practice this kind of active listening and help our neighbors breathe, Christ's peace has room to move among us. And if the intensity between us eases and we can begin to talk rationally, then our best approach is to focus our conversation on the issue right in front of us and work very hard not to personalize it. When a conflict becomes about a person or personalities, it always escalates and it is harder to find a way to resolve it. It is hard, isn't it, to be a peaceful, non-anxious presence. So we too need partners on the journey. God calls and sends us together, not alone. Sometimes we're like Barnabas. We are wise and spiritually mature, gracious and deeply rooted in Christ's love. And God invites us to guide and mentor someone who is growing up in their faith and discovering how to become a person of Christ's peace. And sometimes we're like Saul and we're on fire for Christ and we're ready to save the world. And we are a gift to someone who might be jaded or tired or wonder how much we can actually do to make a difference in people's lives. Together, we are powerful. Together, we embody Christ's love and peace. Pastor Larry and I have served together for five years as partners in ministry at Monroe Street. The Spirit is wise. We have complementary gifts, yet we share God's dream for the world that is not here yet. Over a year ago, God called us together to be witnesses to Christ's love and peace during the pandemic. We never imagined being called to this kind of mission. Along the way, we have supported and encouraged one another as we have learned how to record and create worship videos and offer pastoral care over the phone and figure out Zoom and learn, how to, and, learn and then communicate best public health practices as things with the pandemic keep changing. We have helped one another be non-anxious presences and listen as respectfully as we could responding to your concerns even when we were feeling anxious too. Now, I don't know who is Saul and who is Barnabas. It honestly depends on the day. <laughs> but our prayer is to be faithful to this time and to God's call on our lives and on our church. I am so thankful for our whole church family, for how we care for one another and for our community in this time for all the ways in which we bear witness to Christ's peaceful presence in our world today. May it always be so. Thank you.
friends, receive this blessing. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Moon, may moon and stars pour their healing light on you. Deep peace of Christ, the light of the world to you. Amen.